Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life and welcome to our Lexio Divina. Today we're really going to look at uh, Psalm 31. It's the second penitential psalm. So let's get in there, begin again as we always do with St. Francis's prayer before the cross. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe glorioso Deus illumina tenebras cordis mehi et demi hi fidem rectum. Spem certnet caritatem perfectum domini ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Friends, if you don't know that prayer yet, um, if you have a journal that you're keeping all your notes when you do Lexio Divina along with me, you're probably doing as you normally do, writing in the book, starting in the front and working towards the back. So the back should be empty. The back is where you write these prayers. If you don't know the Latin, um, see I have here a little index page, but you could always do this on the hardback cover. And then I have numbered them. That wasn't page numbers, that was prayer numbers. These um, are the prayers that we've been using. We're not using the blessing of Brother Leo anymore. So there's the sign of the cross as well as St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix in Latin. I know it's in red ink or pink. Um, might be a little bit hard to see, but go ahead and pause the video and you can get that there. Um, our closing prayer that we're currently using that I don't have in Latin is here as number nine. So I'll hold that up for you. It's St. Francis's prayer to the whole order. That's the name of it. And you can go ahead again and pause if you want to write this down. The only note I have is this hyphen here. You hear is well pleasing. You want to say those words together. That's the only trick there. Um, let's move that over. Grab our Bible. This is the Dewey Rames Bible, the one available from Tan slash Benedictus. And we're at Psalm 31. So if you're following along in your own Bible and you have that edition, it is on page 595. Again, Psalm 31, it's also called Beati Quorum. And some versions may have it as Psalm 32. So know that the opening, it's always going to say, I think any edition you have is going to say the second penitential Psalm. It starts out to David himself understanding. Now we really didn't finish this last week. We only went over the whole thing and then looked at verses uh, one and two. And we're going to go ahead and continue that today because we didn't continue it last week. We're going to try and cram all those in this week. So I hope you're willing to join the adventure with me or just watch them at your own pace. They go into the, the uh, playlist on my channel called Lexio Divina. If you're new to my Lexio Divina, my practice has definitely grown as I've grown it with you. So you want to go back to the beginning of that playlist and look at the oldest video. Oh, that was a lot, right? So pause, say the prayers again if you need to. We can always say the Laudate Dominum, which is Psalm 116 or 17. It's the shortest psalm in all of the psalms. Alleluia, Laudate Dominum, Omnis Gentis, Laudate Eum, Omnis Populi, Conium Confirmata, Es Supernos Misericordia, Aesos, Et Veritas Domini, Manet in Aeternum. Mm. Always great to give God glory throughout our day, even as we get ready to cry out to him. To David himself, understanding Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord hath not imputed sin and whose spirit there is no guile. To David himself, understanding. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord hath not imputed sin and in whose spirit there is no guile. To David himself understanding. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord hath not imputed sin and whose spirit there is no guile. Now friends, the first time I read this to you today, what struck me is that it's to David himself understanding. And I'm thinking that David has had this experience. Remember, we, we talked about in our overview that this is David talking about the blessings and then relating to us his own witness. And then we hear how God answered him. And then he gives a little summary at the end. And so I was thinking in the beginning, okay, this is written after it's all happened. And he's talking about himself, to David himself. This is the understanding I've gotten. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. I don't know. 
I don't know if he was saying that at the end or at the beginning. Have you ever sat there in church and contemplated someone that you really feel is super holy and who hasn't had the challenges in life that you have? And yeah, you're almost a little envious of them, but how great to stop and give God glory for those people. Again, the Laudate Dominum, that Psalm 116 or 117, whatever you want to call it, um, that begins with Alleluia. That's a great time to give God the glory. So often I think we see others and their great bounty or blessings that have been given to them and we're going to grumble, 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 grumble. But instead of grumbling, give God the glory. I mean, I could grumble. The truth is many times I do wish I'd had an easier life, but this is the life I've been given, the opportunities I've been given, and I've gone deeper and deeper into my faith. Um, and I'm happy, I won't say with where I am, but I'm happy with where I am compared to where I was not so long ago, right? And so I need, I need to give thanks. And yeah, it's awesome that the Lord has given us, like the saints, you can look at saints and be like, oh, and some of them dealt with great adversity, but some of them you're like, yeah, they were always holy. I can't relate to them. Well, alleluia, what a great example. What would we have to aspire to if we didn't have people who were leading holy lives? It would make it a lot harder in this walk if like no one at all was holy, right? So I'm going to give thanks to God, not only for those who have been holy their whole lives, I'm going to give thanks for those who have had really difficult struggles and are now leading holy lives. And I'm going to give thanks. Maybe I'm not leading the holiest life. Maybe I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I know I'm so blessed to be where I am today. I don't know how you feel about that. Let's read it one more time and we'll go ahead and shut this down for tonight because ugh, to God be all the glory. Let's try again. To David himself understanding, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord hath not imputed sin and whose spirit there is no guile. Amen. Okay, we have our prayer. Yes. In omni patris affiliate spiritus sancti, amen. Almighty, immortal, just, and merciful God, give to us poor creatures to do for you that which we know to be your will, and to will always that which is well pleasing to you, so that inwardly purified, illumined, and enkindled by the flame of your Holy Spirit, we may be enabled to follow in the footprints of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by your grace at length attain to you the Most High, who in perfect trinity and simple unity live and reign, God all powerful, forever and ever. St. Francis of Assisi. Amen. In nomine Patris, affiliate Spiritus Sancti. Amen.